Hey y'all, welcome back for another hunting ammo ballistics gel test. Today we've got a double header. We've got Federal Fusion and 300 Win Mag, the 165 and 180 grain versions going head to head. And here are your boxes for those Federal Fusion 300 Win Mag loads. We've got the 165 and 180 grain versions. Both of them have the whitetail deer icon on there, so sort of what they are meant for. Um, based on previous tests and testimony from a lot of people, I would think you can probably step up to stuff a little bit bigger than whitetail with this ammo. But let's go ahead and flip it around and take a look. So here is your promo info on the Fusion Bullet. Feel free to stop, pause, and read all that if you would like. It's the same on both boxes. Let's go ahead and take a look actually at the 165s first. For the velocity, muzzle velocity is stated at 3,080 feet per second for the 165s. And then for the 180s, it is stated at 2,960 feet per second. So we'll see how close we get to those. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the 180s. They look identical to the eye, so I'm just gonna pull out the 180s for us to look at right now. And there it is, nice clean looking brass. We've got the blue sealant in the primer pockets. There's a bit of glare, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's there, let's go ahead and pull them out. And there it is, classic Federal Fusion. Let's go shoot them and see how they do. And my test rifle today is my Ruger M77 Hawkeye Hunter, chambered in 300 Winchester Magnum, of course. It's got a 24 inch barrel and we are taking advantage of that threaded muzzle. And up top, we've got a Leopold VX3 HD scope. And coming on back, I've got to show you one of my handmade leather cartridge cuffs. Check out my website, masonleather.com to get yourself one. I would love to make you one. And we've got 300 wind stamped right in to let everybody know the hammer is about to fall. And I've also got one of my super thick Latigo leather slings. Check out my website for these as well. If you're looking for a leather sling that will last you a lifetime, you're gonna wanna check these out. And coming around to the other side, I've got to show you my black bear design. And real quick, if you're watching this video anytime around when it came out, I'm having a huge sale on my website, masonleather.com. Go check it out and get yourself something. We'll be taking three shots from 100 yards, firing into 10% ballistics gel that has been calibrated to meet the FBI's ballistics testing protocol. And while ballistics gel isn't an exact proxy for big game, it does provide a repeatable medium through which to test various bullets and ammo against each other. After the shots, we'll examine bullet expansion, weight retention, penetration, and velocity. My goal is to provide hunters like you and I with the most objective information possible to help us make the best choice for our particular hunting situation. The ballistics gel in this video has been sourced from Clear Ballistics. You can find a link in the description. So let's go ahead and shoot it. And here are your velocities for that Federal Fusion 165 grain load out of the 300 Win Mag minimum 3008, maximum 3049 for an average of 3031 feet per second. And here are your velocities for the 180 grain Federal Fusion load, minimum 2810, maximum 2829 for an average of 2817. And we are down here at the blocks after firing the 165 grain Federal Fusions out of the 300 Win Mag. We captured two bullets. I fired for both of the other two slipped out of the block somewhere and I cannot find them. So we're just going to go with two. The other two that did slip out slipped out at about the same point. So I'm going to go with it. And then over here, of course, we have the 180 grain Federal Fusions. We did capture all three of these bullets. But let's talk about the 165s first. And you can see both of them right there in the block. Penetration wise, it looks like we're right at about we're going to just round it up and down to 19 inches for both of those and the third and fourth bullets that slipped out of the block one of them slipped out of the block right there where the tip of my finger is so just prior and it kept going somewhere i can't find it and the other one slipped out of the bottom of the block actually and ricocheted out to the left or right somewhere and i can't find it either but it was about the same uh, depth of penetration so that's good to know um, as we can see Excellent expansion, expansion, that classic fusion star shape in there. Of course, we'll dig them out in a second and take a look. These 165s noticeably slap the front block around more than the 180s. And here we can see the wound tracks. That's two wound tracks stacked, one on top of the other. And then there's a third way down deep in the block over there. I'll go around to the other side, see if we can get a better look. All right, the other side didn't have a better look, but here we can look in the side. 
and just look at that wound track. We get pretty rapid expansion. Well, I guess it takes just a second to get going. Right about there, it kind of gets going at the two inch mark, opens up and then closes off at about the nine inch mark and then tapers even more and then keeps on going. About par for the course for what I have seen from Fusion. So those are the 165s. We'll dig them out and take a look here in a second. And then onto the 180s, we got all three of these coming down to the side. You can see two of them right next to each other right here, just massive expansion, looking absolutely beautiful. And then our third bullet almost slipped out of the other side of the block and it got caught by this other block I have sitting just in the middle so you can see it right there. And so penetration wise, for these two, we're at about 22 and 23 inches respectively. And then this other one over here is at about 22 inches as well. So that's what we'll count that at. And coming on back to the first block, these 180s didn't slap the first block around as much as, as the 165s, but it still made it fly a couple of times. And you can see the wound tracks right next to each other going through the block down there. The wound tracks look a bit narrower actually than the 165s. Uh, maybe that points to a more a slower rate of expansion and thus a little bit deeper penetration. Not a ton deeper penetration, but a little bit deeper penetration. Anyway, let's go ahead and dig them all out and take a look. All right, y'all, we shot them. Let's talk about them. Federal Fusion 165 and 180 grain and 300 wind mag. Weight retention wise, for the 165s, we saw 139, 143, and 147 grains. For an average of 143 grains retained weight, that works out to 87% weight retention. For the 180 grain version, we saw 169, 172, and 175 grains for an average of 172 grains retained weight, which works out to 96% weight retention, so those 180s have a little bit of a leg up. Not surprising, it's the heavier of the two. Expansion wise, for the 165s, we saw 0 0.73, 0 0.85, and 0.92 inches for an average of 0.83 inches expanded diameter, and that works out to 2.7x expansion, really nice. And for the 180s, we saw 0 0.87, 0 0.89, and 0.96 inches for an average of 0.91 inches expanded diameter, which is 2.9x expansion. Whichever way you go, these things are big. And velocity wise for the 165s, we saw 3,049 feet per second for the high, 3,008 for the low for an average of 3,032 feet per second versus the factory build velocity of 3,080 feet per second. So we only came in 48 feet per second slow on average versus box spec, which is always nice to see. That's a lot better than most of the ammo I've tested in 300 Win Mag. This stuff's actually up there kissing the factory rated velocity. It's nice to see. And our estimated velocity down there at 100 yards is 2,835 feet per second. For the 180s, our high velocity was 28.30, our low was 28.10 for an average of 28.18 versus the factory spec of 29.60. So these came in quite a bit lower than factory spec than the 165s, 142 feet per second slower. So you can't chalk it up to a slow barrel or something like that. These were fired out of the same gun. And the difference in velocity versus box spec is quite substantial, almost 100 feet per second. It is what it is. And our estimated impact velocity down there at 100 yards for the 180s is 2,635 feet per second. Penetration wise for the 165s, and I did find the third bullet. I made a note on my little info sheet here. Whenever I was down there filming down there at the blocks, looking at everything, I couldn't find the third bullet. I could tell where it came out of the block at, but I couldn't find the bullet anywhere. Well, I wound up finding it. It was like in the grass on the other side. It had hit one of the other gel blocks when it exited and like bounced. So I wound up finding it. That's why we're talking about it. It's not like deformed or messed up in any way from hitting something else. I can tell where it came out of the block and it had dumped most of its energy and penetrated to where it was going to. So we're gonna count it for everything because the penetration was the same for all three. 19 inches, 19 inches, and 19 inches for an average of 19 inches of penetration. And that is close to what I like to see for your medium game hunting, your deer hunting, stuff like that. I like to see 20 inches or a little bit more. But remember, this stuff expanded absolutely massive. So there's going to be a trade-off. With that massive expansion, you're probably going to get a little bit less penetration. And that's what we saw here. 
Now even so, out of a 300 Win Mag 165 grain bullet, I'm kind of surprised it didn't go a little bit deeper. It is what it is. Now you put this through a white-tailed deer, it's still going to do the job for you. For the 180s penetration-wise, we saw 22 inches, 22 inches, and 23 inches. Very consistent for both of these loads. For an average of about 22 and a half inches of penetration, that is just over that 20-inch mark that I like to see. And being it's the heavier of the two bullets, you would think it would go a little bit deeper, and it did. And kinetic energy wise, with the 165s, we're looking at 3,368 foot pounds at the muzzle and 2,944 foot pounds down there at 100 yards. With the 180s, we're looking at quite a bit less energy actually, and that's due to the slower velocity. 3,173 foot pounds at the muzzle and 2,774 foot pounds down there at 100 yards. I wish we'd seen better velocity out of the 180s. The 165s did pretty good. And a quick announcement before we get to my final thoughts, if you'd like early access to my videos weeks and even months in advance of everyone else, become a channel member. The links will be in the video description and the pinned comment. Thanks y'all. All right y'all, time for my final thoughts on these Federal Fusion loads for the 300 Win Mag. They did pretty good across the board. Great weight retention for the 180 grain, a little bit less great weight retention for the 165s. I wish we would have seen better weight retention for the 165s, but it is what it is. Expansion wise, both of these did incredible, huge 2.7X and 2.9X respectively. These are gonna make a big nasty hole through whatever you shoot them through. Velocity wise, and this is interesting, I think this points to inconsistency in the factory loading process, which isn't super surprising. I mean, they're cranking this ammo out. There's going to be more variance than if you're hand loading the stuff or using a smaller boutique manufacturer or something like that. It's only logical, but the 165s did really good. They came really close to box spec. The 180s came in a bit slower. It is what it is. It's really not super important, but I just want to let you guys know. And penetration wise, both of these are right there in that range I like to see for medium game hunting, which is what both of these are meant for. On the box, there's that deer icon. You know, they're not marketed as, you know, elk loads or anything like that. Although if you put them in the right spot, I'm I guarantee they do the job. But for white-tailed deer, these are right there where you want to see. 19 inches for the 165s, 22 and a half for the 180s. You put these things through the shoulder in the vitals of a big buck, he's going to go down hard. So all in all, at the end of the day, I'm pretty pleased with the performance. I like what I see. I wouldn't hesitate to use either one of these on medium game. Personally, for me, it would probably come down to which one just shot more accurately out of my particular rifle, and I would go with that one. The difference in, you know, weight retention and penetration and expansion between these two aren't enough to really justify going one way or the other. I'm just going to go with whatever one's more accurate. If you've used either one of these loads in 300 Winchester Magnum on game, let me and everyone else know how it did down in the comments. And check out my website, masonleather.com, and get yourself some leather gear handmade by me just for you. I've been handcrafting leather gear for hunters for over a decade, and I would love to make you something. And there are hundreds of reviews on my website, so you can see what real hunters have to say about their mason leather gear. And also, tons of photos showing all the customizable options, including name, initial, and caliber stamping, as well as wild game designs and more. Everything is handmade by me right here in the USA. I would love to be a part of your hunt through my leather gear. And it helps support this channel so I can bring you more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests and lots of other cool stuff in the future. The link will be in the video description and the pinned comment or you can just type masonleather.com into your web browser. And click one of these cards for more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests.